Hello, how are you? Welcome to the Thumbed Page. We are a used bookstore. Oh yes, you phoned earlier. Yes, I was able to find some of the titles that you requested. And I also went through and selected some books that were similar to the ones that you were asking for uh, in a similar genres. Um, so I thought we could go through the books that you um, requested as well as the recommendations from myself and you can select the ones you'd like to take with you today. Great, that sounds wonderful. Let's get started right away, shall we? Oh, before I start, would you like any um, tea or coffee? Okay, well, there is a complimentary tea and coffee bar um, at the front of the shop if you're interested before you leave today. All right, let's get started. So the first books that you requested are actually part of a two-part, two um, are part of a series that comes in two parts, um, and that is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. I'm assuming you are familiar with the series since you asked for it. Yes, it is really excellent. I have read it. Um, you can see it's in quite good condition for a used book. Whoever owned this book before took very good care of it. Yes, and some of the books do have the used sticker on the spine, but, you know, some people do like that well-loved feeling. So you can see here we have the first part. Um, it's called Mouse. And this book was truly groundbreaking um, in the sort of telling of Holocaust experiences. Mm. So um, the way that Spiegelman chose to tell the story of his father's survival of the Holocaust is by using animals. So the Jews in this book are represented as mice, and the Nazis, as you can clearly see by the front cover, are represented as cats. Um, and then there are different animals that um, represent different people throughout the, the book. Um, the, the poles are represented as pigs and so on and so forth. So let's take a look inside here. You can see the art is really beautiful. It's black and white. I just love the way that Spiegelman told his father's story and the history of his father is um, sort of intertwined with the story of Spiegelman's relationship with his father. So I think really this was him trying to understand his father a little bit better by having him sit down and tell this story. And it's really, it's quite heartbreaking um, in a lot of places, but it's also, you know, triumphant in places too. It's just a really great, great book. You can see here, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> here is a Polish, Polish man. Um, actually, I believe this is a nurse represented as a pig. Um, it's been quite a while since I read this series, but it is truly phenomenal. So that's the first part, and that's called My Father Bleeds History. And I'm going to just set these aside, and at the end you can decide which ones you'd like to take with you today. Then this is the second part, and here my troubles began. Now, this graphic novel does come as um, a set in one binding. We do not have that in the shop, unfortunately. Um, but if you do uh, desire that, we can order it for you from Amazon um, or somewhere else and get it here for you to pick up. But it's your choice. And again, the same sort of representation here. So I'll just show you a few pages from this book.
So you can see a lot of story uh, in with the amazing art that is done by Mr. Spiegelman. And this is the back cover of the um, part two. It's a map of, of Auschwitz concentration camp. You can see Poland and then here a map of New York City. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, sort of southern New York, not necessarily just New York City. But I very, very highly recommend these books, and I think that was an excellent choice. The next book that you requested, we actually did have. We've had trouble um, keeping this on the shelf when people do bring it in. It's another graphic novel. And it's a doozy. You could build some muscles carrying this one around. It's The Walking Dead. Yes. Very popular. Do you watch the television show on AMC? You do. Yes. It's great. Yes, and I have to say this really enhanced my experience watching the TV show. It didn't ruin anything for me. Um, because the show does kind of take on a life of its own, even though it does draw things from the graphic novel. So this is Compendium 1. Um, it's volumes, oh goodness, issues 1 through um, well, chapters 1 through 8, which is issues 1 through, oh my goodness, I don't can't remember exactly how many issues, but you can see a lot. So this is the cover. It's quite thick. This is the back cover. And I'll show you a little bit inside. Black and white art. Different characters, but of course we have Glenn here, who we know and love from the TV show. Oh, there was a zombie attack. It's Lori. I just love the way the pages smell in this book. I know, there's nothing like the smell of, of, a, of a book. Old, new, doesn't matter. They all have that great smell to it. There's Herschel. And I don't know if you are familiar but there are a few novels out about a character that will be on the next season of the show that plays a prominent role in this series. Um, his name is The Governor, and the um, novels that are out are his origin story. They're very good. This is Michonne. You were introduced to her at the very end of this past season. So, there's that. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit and move on to a different genre. Um, history, nonfiction. This was um, one of the books you recommended. Washington, A Life. This is about George Washington. Obviously, yeah. I have not had an opportunity to read this yet, um, but I have heard it's very good. The person who, um, sorry, we have two shop cats and they are shedding everywhere. <laughs> um, the person who brought this in um, brought a very high recommendation with it. So if you like history, this is a good one. And the author won the Pulitzer Prize for this book. It's 
so you can see. The print is a pretty good size for a history book. It's not too small. And it does have the insert with pictures. The glossy pages. So yes, it's very good. Mr. Washington himself. Yes. Oh, really? That's great. And do you like studying history in college? Excellent. And what do you plan to do with that degree? Oh, very cool. It must be interesting to work with historic artifacts and preservation and all of that, so... Great. Well, I wish you very good luck with that. The next book that you requested is another popular one. But we just got a copy in the other day, actually, so you called at the right time. This is Lies My Teacher Told Me. National bestseller. And this book pretty much takes um, historic information that we have always thought is truth and sort of expands upon it or debunks it. Um, for example, it talks about how Helen Keller, far from being a sort of um, meek and quiet person, Despite her blindness and deafness, she was quite an active socialist, actually, and very outspoken, um, very active in that community. So, this is, oops, it looked like whoever returned this book left a newspaper article inside. Interesting. Say that. So yes, and this book does have some sw slight wear on the corners, but nothing too bad. Again, you can see it was well loved. So I will add that to your pile. And then I brought out a suggested title for you. This is called Bloody Mohawk. This is a book um, about the French and Indian War and the American Revolution in New York State um, on the frontier, which would mostly be upstate New York. This is very good. Um, it really ties in the French and Indian War with the American Revolution. And I have often heard people say that if we hadn't fought the French and Indian War, we would not have had American Revolution, at least not in the way that it happened. So, here's the inside. This is almost brand new. I love the pages in this book. They're very heavy duty. And there are a lot of images, maps, and such. I don't know if you can hear it, but... One of the shop cats is playing with a toy. Yes. Yes, they're very friendly. We get uh, a lot of customers in here who just come to see the cats. <sighs> okay. Excuse me one moment, please. Yes, I haven't had my coffee yet today. Hmm. This next book that you um, requested is Beloved. You can see this has been used, slightly worn. This is actually an excellent novel by Toni Morrison. She has written several books. Um, many of them have been on the Oprah Book Club what I like about this is it combines history with a sense of the supernatural. It takes place in the antebellum south. 
so these are people who were former slaves who are um, coping with, you know, trying to find their own lives and create their own lives and carve out a space for themselves, for themselves, excuse me, in the South after the Civil War. So I very much recommend this. Along fiction lines, um, I'm giving this as a recommendation. This is, was not on your list, but this is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is actually coming out as a movie quite soon. And um, I'm assuming it's going to be a quite successful movie. It's got Emma Watson, who played Hermione Granger in Harry Potter. So, I'm thinking quite a few people are going to see this. And I always recommend reading the book first before going to see the movie. You can see this has been a little bit worn. It's written um, in, a, in an um, epistolary form. And letters, and the main, main character, whose name is Charlie. You can see it takes place in the 90s, early 90s. I really loved this book, and it's not too, too long. It'd be a good vacation book, I think. Along the lines of fiction still, this is a book you requested, one of my personal favorites, The Catcher in the Rye. Um, I read this book in 10th grade, and it's one of the reasons I majored in English in college. Yes, with the white cover, you do see marks easily, but... Like I said, a well-worn book shows that it's a loved book, a loved story. So, it's by J.D. Salinger. Have you read this before? You have. Okay, so you know all about Holden Caulfield and everything that he has to deal with and his phonies and everything like that. So here's the text and the pages. Yes. We actually did get an original copy in here once uh, with the red cover, but that was gone within a few minutes actually. <gasps> so someone snatched it up that very same day. Staying along uh, fiction still. This is a recommendation for you. This is um, a book called Have Mercy on Us All by Fred Vargas, who is a French author. It is a mystery, but it includes elements um, of history. This series focuses on the bubonic plague. Um, this is a very excellent book. I highly recommend this. Um, it takes place in contemporary times in Paris. And um, they, there is a town crier who has been receiving mysterious messages um, about 
the imminent onset of the bubonic plague. So you can see the cover here. The image on the cover is the backwards four with the two lines, which was an image, a symbol that was put on the doors of people suffering from the plague. Um, very, very good. bit hefty, but not, uh, not unreadable. In the back we have a picture of Fred Vargas. Fred Vargas is actually a woman. She's written several books in French. She's actually a historian and an archaeologist. Um, so, I think that adds a, an element of, of um, realism, I guess, to her writing. Yes. Okay. Just a couple more here. This is actually my favorite um, published... Uh, my favorite edition of, of Hamlet, the Arden Shakespeare. It includes the first quarto text, which was published in 1603, the first folio text, which was published in 1623, and it includes other things as well. Um, an introduction with illustrations, notes and commentary, very detailed. And I just love this cover. I love this silver. Yeah. So let's take a look inside. The pages are very thick and sturdy. And you can see, I'll show you an example of the notes that are throughout this edition. In the bottom of the pages. You can see there are notes inside this book. Here's the beginning of the first folio. So you can compare the texts. Many times the two versions, the first quarto and the first folio, are conflated. This has them separate so that you can compare the two editions. Have you read it? You've only seen the Mel Gibson film. Ah, well, <laughs> you are certainly in for a treat. Uh, if you are interested in uh, another Hamlet film, the Kenneth Branagh version is excellent. He takes the play and sets it in Victorian England, and it has Kate Winslet, uh, Robin Williams, Billy Crystal. It's a really all-star cast, and it's excellent. So, here's the back. And the last book I have for you, it took me a little while to find this, but we had it. <laughs> and you can see this uh, little bee. Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. Really, a childhood favorite. It's one of mine as well. I still have my copy that I bought when I was in um, middle school. So you know the story retelling of Cinderella in a way. I love Gail Carson Levine. I think young adult fiction is so underrated and I think that's been brought to people's attention with the success of of the series um, The Hunger Games. Yes, I read them. Didn't you love them? Yes, I thought the film was alright. Um, not as as the book, but 
you know. So here is Ella Enchanted. You can see it's quite beat up. Um, this took me quite a while to find, but we did have it stocked away in the back. The pages have yellowed slightly over time. But, you know, it's not completely damaged in a way that it's falling apart or you can't read it, so. Yes, I didn't think this film was very good either. Yes, Anne Hathaway was too old to be playing Ella's character, I agree. Yeah, it's true. And there's the back, I'll show you. So really, that's the major, major um, issue with this book which can be easily fixed with some binding tape. Um, but it's not going to fall apart if you leave it that way, so. Hmm. So I've got all your books set aside. Why don't you take a moment and enjoy some tea or coffee, and um, then we can decide which ones you like, and I can ring you out. Excellent. Oh, okay. Yes, we do exchange books. Mm hmm Okay. Well, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 to 4.30. No, we're not open on Sundays. Okay. All right. I'll see you in a few minutes.